I'll be taken away. I found the source of the joy that caused me to hang under here and give God the praise. I found the source of the joy. And my source of the joy is not in my paycheck. It's not in my job. It's not in the car I drive. It's not in the house I live. Oh, but I serve a risen Savior. Oh, my God. I wish I was in the apostolic church. But I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world to me. How do you know he's in the world? He lives in me. He walks in me. I wish I had somebody in here that knows this Savior I'm talking about. I wish I had somebody tap your friends and next to you and say, do you know Jesus? And if you know Jesus, you'll have that joy down on the inside. Shout hallelujah. The joy that I have for you. Let me hear out here. The message I have for you is right here. It's in the message here. It says, for unto you. I'll give somebody a high five. And say, he's talking about all of us. I love this. But he says, unto you. God has a special interest uh, just in you. Uh, amen. I don't care what your past background is. Uh, I don't care what your history is. Uh, I serve a God uh, that said, I know where you've been. Uh, I know what you've done, uh, but I still love you. Oh, my God. Look at somebody close here uh, and said, God loves you uh, in spite of you. Uh, God loves you uh, in spite of what you've done. Uh, God loves you uh, in spite of where you've been. Uh, I don't care what your track record is. Uh, I don't care what your resume said, I serve a God, God Almighty, God of the universe, the creator of heaven and earth. He told me to tell somebody in here, your mother may kick you out, your father may not want to talk to you, but God told me to tell you, I love you with an everlasting love. I love you in spite of what you've been through. I love you in spite of where you've been. I love you in spite of your activities. I love you in spite of where you have I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. I love it. I love this. I can't do nothing to divorce myself from the love of God. Oh, I wish you might as well stop trying to get God to stop loving you. It cannot happen. Give somebody a high five and say, I'm so glad, amen, that I can't disrupt the love of God. God loves me. He loved me before I knew him. God loves me. He loved me before I confessed. God loves me. He loved me before I got in the water. God loves me. He loved me before I got filled with the Holy I'm so glad while you're laying in the streets. God still love you while you're standing around. He still love you. His love is so great. His love is so powerful. His love is so loving that God said, I love you in spite of who you are. The Bible said that God so loved the world. Yeah. And the world didn't love him. It was the low world that crucified him. But God said that he so loved the world that he... Yeah. The only reason I'm here right now is because God keep on giving. And not before God giving, we'd be dead right now. We'd be caught right now. But somebody said, thank God for the love of God. And he sent this message to us. He said, for unto you I'm trying to give the devil a black eye. Because the devil got you feel like you're a nobody. The devil got you feel like you don't count. But God told me to tell you, you are somebody. Come on, put that down, brother. He said, you are somebody. Uh, the world, the people put you down. But God said, I love you. I got a message for you. I got something I want to tell you. He said, for unto you, oh my God, is born this day. That tells you that the Savior, Jesus the Savior, did not coexist. Because he coexisted as a Savior after we born. Oh, if we find right now that Jesus is a savior, he was born, and the message of the angel told them that unto you this day, amen, is born in the city of David. Not just anybody, all but a savior. He said, You need help, you need some help, and God recognized you need some help. So God came down for 42 generations, took off his robe of glory, and put on the robe of flesh and stepped into this world. What was the purpose of coming to world? He came to save you. He went to Calvary to save you. You will put your name in there. God loves you so much. Before you were born, he went to Calvary. Before you conceived, he went to 
carry. He knew you would be born. He knew you would be a mess when you came to the world. But he made a way where you could be changed. He made a way where you could be saved. He made a way where you could be redeemed. When you look at the manger, you see your Savior laying in the manger. He come with all power to save and to deliver. He said, a Savior, which is Christ, the promised one, the Messiah, he's coming. And why is he coming? Because we have a need. Don't sit up here and act like you don't have a need. Don't sit up and act like you don't have a need. You know you're frustrated. You know you've been torn from one side to the other. You know you're not happy down on the inside. You know you're not content down on the inside. You know if you can just see what's going on in the inside. A bunch of mess is down on the inside. But God has sent a mess at every one of us. Now we go I love you. But I come to rescue you. That word Savior means a one who's going to rescue you. That word Savior means one who's going to redeem you. That word Savior means one who's going to step forth in shining armor to deliver you out of the clutches of the adversary. You say, how did I get this state? You were born in sin and you're born in the negative. Oh, don't say I don't need it. All of us need help. All of us need deliverance. I'm reminded of David as I close in the 51st Psalms. I heard David cry out and in despair. And he cried out and hurt. And he said, Oh, wretched man, I am. I need some help. I need some deliverance. I need somebody to get me out of this shape. I need somebody to deliver me. I need somebody to turn my life around. I need somebody to reach in here. David cried out. He said, yes, I was born in this state. But he cried out. He said, my sin is ever before me. I need somebody to restore the joy of my salvation. Sin is so powerful that we need a savior. You can't get past the guilt. You can lay down at night. And guilt will just attack your consciousness. Because guess what? You know you did what you did. Or you can go over from the judge and say, oh, I didn't do it, no, I didn't do it. But your consciousness, your consciousness, don't get uneasy on me. Don't get quiet on me. But your consciousness is a silent voice that goes through the corners of a whole lot of mess and touches your mind. And David said, my sin is ever before me. I can't get away from it. I can't run from it. Every now and then something is said that reminds me of my past. Every now and then something is done that takes me back to my past. And David said, I want to get away from my past. I need some deliverance. I need some help. And so he cried and said, Lord, I need you to do a new creation in me. Somebody help me here. He said, I need a whole new creation in me. He said, I know what the problem is. The problem is what's on the inside. So Lord, I need you to do what? Create in me. I need you to create in me. Clean heart. Oh, look at somebody say, I know God needs to do some work on me. I don't care how long you've been in the church. Some of us, amen, we're in a church all the way right to hell. Oh my God, it's not about being in the church. It's about the church being in uh, David cried out got real. He said, Lord, I need you to work on me. I need you to create within me. I need a clean heart. Negative thoughts. Dirty thoughts. Contrary thoughts keep on going through my mind. Thoughts that shouldn't be there go through my mind. Seeds are being planted in my heart, and then when I let those seeds be planted, I can't look straight at the brother. I can't look straight at the sun. Well, the devil, I was slumbering and slept. The devil planted seeds of tar in my heart. But David said, I'm tired of walking around burning. I'm tired of being burned. I'm tired of wrestling with these thoughts. I'm tired of wrestling with sin. I'm tired of wrestling with unrighteousness. He said, Lord, I give you permission. I surrender. I'll give you the authority to step into my life and do a remake of me. Create in me a clean heart. Christmas is about God stepping into the world. Come on, Bishop. To put us on a mission to create. He said in Isaiah chapter 30, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a new thing. That new thing is going to take that heart of stone and give us a heart. The heart of flesh is sensitive. It's soft. 